So I brought in an expert. This is Eli from Ken Cove Farm Fencing. Uh, Eli, Ken Cove has fencing for every animal you can imagine, right? Yep. You guys have worked with some crazy animals. We had camels here. Any other cool ones? <laughs> yeah. Uh, bison, a lot of bison ranches. Bison. Yep. So bison, camels, goats, and pigs aren't too bad, right? <laughs> when we look around our homestead, we have pretty much all your basic farm animals, right? Uh, you guys helped us design a couple different fence systems in this last year or so sure. that we've installed and actually have had since then zero goat escapes, pig escapes, awesome. uh, except for maybe once or twice when I forgot to turn the fence off. <laughs> so. Uh, why don't you show us here in our paddock, Eli, what you guys helped us design as far as goat fencing goes. Sure. Uh, how do you make sure when you're going to get some goats, especially if they're little ones like what we have, they stay in? Well, typically you're going to go with the woven wire situation. We call our 4x4 four four woven wire sheep and goat fence. That's classically what people order when they're looking for sheep and goat fence. Um, it's going to be a woven wire or we do a 3x3 three three as well, a little bit tighter spacing if you need. That's going to keep them contained. It's going to keep them from reaching their heads through and getting any horns stuck or anything like that. Uh, woven wire, you're going to see different knot styles. This is a fixed knot and it encompasses the whole intersection of the wire and it's not going to slide left or right horizontally. Um, versus an S knot, this is going to be the strongest. S knot would be your next best or we call it a fast lock in, in our catalog. And then a hinge joint just looks kind of like a fist on there like this. The hinge joint can slide left and right where the fixed knot is fixed. It's yeah. not going to move. So whether you're working with goats or any other class of livestock, that's going to be your best bet for a woven wire knot. Now, depending on the goats or the sheep, some of them like to really press up against the fence and they can wear it out. You know, uh, any good tips on keeping them off? Well, like you have here, you've got offset electric and that works wonders for lots of different classes of livestock. This is great as a physical barrier, as a visual deterrent, and then your electric adds to psychological. Yeah. Yeah. And with goats height, Height-wise, probably 40 to 48, or depending on how athletic they are. Um, you know, <laughs> they can climb and they can, they can do all kinds of things, so probably a 40 to 48 at the minimum. Yeah, yep. Yep, I think of all the animals, the goats have been the most surprising as to what they could get out of. So. <laughs> sure. Yeah, but they've never, this one has been great. We, between the hot wire and the, the woven, and you'll notice our woven, it's not even technically really buried. It's just flush to the bottom mm -hmm. with this hot wire. These little ones stay in, and the big goats we've had in the past stay in. Now, pigs, it's a whole other story. Goats like to jump, mm -hmm. sheep like to push, pigs root under. Yep. Let's go to the pig pen and see what keeps them in. Pigs are another notoriously hard animal to make sure stays where you want it to. And the thing with pigs is they get out, they wind up going rogue, wild, and I don't want to be the epicenter of the next, you know, wild boar, Pennsylvania right. wild boar right. experience. Uh, what do we got to do to make sure these guys don't get out of our fencing, Eli? Uh, similar fashion, offset electric, keeping it down low. Yeah. In my experience, you've probably seen the same thing. Very uh, respectful once they get a taste of the electric, especially when they're leading with their nose, you yep. know, because they're always rooting around. Yep. Um, so something that will engage that nose really well, keep it low to the ground, uh, keep them from going under, like yeah. you mentioned. And having a physical backing behind it just enforces that visually and physically. Yeah, we've seen pigs, when we've done more rotational stuff, that are willing to leap through. Mm. Like if you just have a couple strands, strands. Yeah. they'll leap through it. They'll make the calculated choice. I've seen pigs, when they don't have the physical barrier behind the electric wire, mm -hmm. they'll decide, well, I'm going to run under this. I'm going to get shocked, but I'm going to run. Yeah. So having the combo electric plus the physical, you'll notice this isn't even really buried here. Sure, sure. It's resting tight on the surface, but with that hot wire, you don't have to bury. Mm -hmm. We've never had an es these pigs escape from this, this setup here. Uh, as far as the physical barrier goes, any suggestions on the woven wire? What, what kind of fencing to put up there? Sure. You can see here, this is a graduated spacing, so we're a little bit tighter together on the bottom as we work our way up. That's a, a good practice for multi-species in yeah. general, but it keeps those squares nice and tight at yep. the bottom for pigs. This keeps the pigs in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we get to some bigger animals, the cows just came down. Let's go see what we do to keep the cows in. All right. Nice thing about this fencing here in our, our main paddocks where we keep the pigs, we keep the goats. It's worked good for the smaller animals. It also is not being destroyed by our bigger animals, right? Your high tensile wire is the is the saving grace with cattle, especially whether in confinement or open pasture situations. Yeah. So flexible, it's strong, it's easier to work with. It can be electric or non-electric, either way you need to do it. Yeah, we found having bulls here when we brought, actually we got a bull from your oh, yeah, farm yeah, yeah. not too, well, a couple of years ago. 
And then we actually got a bigger mini Jersey mm -hmm. uh, bull here. He was, that guy was a pusher on fences. So having that hot wire, not only down there for the pigs, but then this middle one up here yep. for the bulls and the cows kept them off of the fence. Mm -hmm. And then as you can see behind us, we ran that high tensile right. out into the pasture, out into the paddocks where we do rotational grazing. Mm -hmm. Now this top one here, that design, not for the cows. What's the idea behind having a hot wire at the top here? Anything like a horse or like your camels that were yep. present, keep them from reaching their neck over, yeah. you know, keep them off that top line, prevent any sagging or anything like that. If someone has chickens or any other, you know, poultry, what is the right kind of fencing to keep those animals contained? Sure. Chickens or poultry, anything like that, probably a hex wire. That's what I like to call it, the hex wire, the very small chicken wire. We have a PVC coated wire. Um, if you're doing more outside stuff, we have a three and a half inch net. You need to be more portable with things like that. So that's probably your best bet for poultry. Uh, as far as height, any consideration in the height? height for your... wise 40 inch probably minimum for any chickens or birds that are going to try to flap their way over top. Yeah. Uh, a lot of those netting materials are 48 that you can get it in if you need a little bit of taller. But the hex netting comes from two to four to six to eight, whatever you need to do there. So cool. it can be pretty customizable. By the way, we will have links below so that you can find Ken Cove and the different kind of animals to fence. You guys on your website actually have a uh, by animal category. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that'll be that'll make it easier for you to find. All right, working our way up, we covered the poultry. We've actually never had alpacas or llamas, uh, mm -hmm. but for someone who's getting into those kind of animals, any suggestions on fencing? Yeah, uh, just, just height to go with it. As we start moving up the class of animals and that spacing is less and less crucial, we do have different configurations that open up that spacing. Uh, you're saving by the roll at that point. There's yeah. not as much material use in there. So go ahead, get something with a little bit bigger spacing. Or yes. as we go up, it has graduated spacing. So if the spacing is closer at the bottom and then it gets wider, the higher it goes up the woven. Cool. So and that would apply right on up to like horses? Height wise, sure. But with horse, we usually go with a two by four, similar to that first one we mentioned, just for the safety factor with horses. Got um, it nothing getting a foot through a fence or getting cut or anything like that or horse play literally <laughs> out in the paddock uh we don't want to see anybody getting hurt or scraped or cut on anything yeah. like that so two by four is the recommendation for horse one thing a lot of people have seen on our channel uh, they've seen us bring some of the animals as they grow from our escape proof woven wire with hot wire paddocks down here out into the high tensile field for rotational grazing yeah. Uh, while you might not want to permanently fence a pig with high tensile, uh, are there other animals that you can, like pigs or goats, work within your high tensile and rotational grazing? Yeah, absolutely, especially with the right wire height. Um, we have some resources for different species, different variations, whether you want to do woven or you want to do high tensile to match what you have going on. Um, it can be used pretty universally. If you're covering a lot of ground, it's probably going to be your most economic option. I do like high tensile for the fact of any trees or branches falling on it. Yeah, uh, that's it, so nice. It can take a hit. Yep. You know, it can take a hit. Uh, and the high tensile in the woven wire has definitely come a long way in the last 10 and 20 years to be more elastic like that. But some of those knots will, might need reworked or retensioned, uh, but the high tensile can take a hit. Yeah. That's great. If somebody is ready to get some livestock and they want to make sure they've thought of all the things, the hot wires, the top wires, mm -hmm. the right knots in their woven wire. What's the best way to design a fence with Ken Cove? I would say get in touch with one of our product specialists. I mean, they've seen a lot of configurations over the years from, you know, bison ranches to homestead stuff, everything in between, even just garden protection. So yeah. we, we do deer and other deterrents and things like keeping that. Keeping them out, keeping them in. <laughs> That's right. Both ways, both ways. Yeah. So I would say get in touch with a product specialist, um, peruse the website to maybe get some familiarity, but then they'll be able to walk you right through a design that works for you. That's awesome. If somebody is interested in designing their fence, you guys have a great video that you worked on at yeah. Ken Cove's channel. Click here to watch a video series where they help you design your own farm fence. Eli and Ashley from Ken Cove will walk you through the steps, get you started, and don't be afraid to give Ken Cove a call.